Hey everyone, so I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. I saw Coco and uh, it beat Justice League at the box office, which I don't know, that film's only been out for a week, so I don't know if that's kind of sad on Justice League's part and the fact that they're kind of tanking at the domestic box office. It's kind of depressing actually, but Coco, I'm glad it's succeeding the way it is because it's a really good movie. Um, I'm just going to offer some real quick thoughts on the film. I'm sure you've already seen a lot of reviews of it. I'm sure you may have already seen the movie. I'm sure everybody's liking it as much as I did. So I don't really have anything much more to offer, but I figured I would just throw in a couple uh, quick thoughts that I had on it. The story was, uh, it's not that it's anything new. In fact, the story's been done kind of a few times. It's just a kid who has a different path than what his family wants him to take. He's in love with music and they're not. They have a huge hatred for music because one of their ancestors from, I think it was his great great grandfather, uh, ditched his family to become a musician and ever since then they've all hated music and they want nothing to do with it. And uh, well, this kid really likes music. He tries playing the guitar. He's a huge fan of this old musician from way back in the day who was real popular so he has a love for music he learns guitar and the family just doesn't like that so then he goes off on his own and decides to uh well it's because his guitar gets dismantled by one of his family men uh, his one of his family members his grandmother destroys his guitar and it's a very crazy scene where this is the only thing about this movie it was she went way too far there she literally just grabs his guitar smashes it on the ground several times and is like you ain't playing music and I'm like what do people actually do that I mean maybe there are families that are like that but I'm like you are taking it way too far I don't think I'd forgive my grandma for that you just destroyed my guitar what's wrong with you she just throws it on the ground she's like stomping on it and I'm like what but other than that, uh, he has to basically go into uh, the mausoleum of the famous guitar player and take his guitar that's on display and when he strums it, he ends up being brought into, uh, it's sort of like a portal into the world of the dead where he meets all his uh, ancestors and in the process of the film he basically has to get their approval for him to play music in order to make it back into the land of the living. There's a couple more things to it but it's a very uh, it's a very smart plot device. The main character who is named Miguel ends up meeting with uh, Hector who is in the land of the dead and he can't make it into the world of the living. That's because uh, in Mexican culture I guess they show pictures and that's the way for their remembrance to bring their souls back into the world. So they kind of, they show how it all works. I don't know how accurate it is to the actual traditions of Mexican culture, but you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm sure there's gonna be a big write up about it someday. I for one thought it was really interesting if this is uh, true though, if all this stuff that they were writing is true to the tradition, it's very interesting and it's very laid out how it all works. The film is paced really, really well, so uh, there's never any moment where you're getting bored with the film. And then there's kind of a detour here and there where they're just having a fun scene, but it's a lot of fun. So I don't know, I thought the movie worked really well. It all builds towards a really great uh, climax, which it's heartbreaking, <laughs> it's really emotional and it just works. If you, I don't know, if you if you have a family, I think you'll relate to it, and it just works in that way. I did for sure. I really, yeah, it's good. Uh, the characters are all really great. Miguel is a great main lead. He's someone who's just ambitious and such a bright, positive optimism to him, and I really enjoyed his character. He had a dog with him the whole time, which is just this ugly looking dog that's animated so well, he just kind of moves around, like a Looney Tune almost. He's just of an obnoxious character. You got uh, Hector, who at first seems like this kind of slimy sort of guy who's just sort of tried, to, he's trying to trick his way into scenarios, and he's trying to, it seems like he's, it, it seems like at first he's gonna be you know, the loser of the film, the guy to not trust at all, but as the film progresses, you learn that he ends up being uh, 
the most, I don't know, interesting and compelling character in the whole piece. Uh, there is a surprise villain in the film, and it's a case where it works really well just because of how the character is done, how everything is built up, and it's, a, it's you've seen the cliche many times, but it just works really well here. Um, as for the other characters, I, his grandmother, even though she, he went, she went to way too extreme lengths of lengths to just stop him from playing music, like, it, it was just nuts. She's done really well. His parents aren't really in the film, and then he's got a bunch of ancestors in the land of the dead who don't really get that much screen time, which is a problem with a lot of movies. If you introduce a bunch of characters at once, you're just not going to remember them all. But it kind of doesn't matter also because they're not the main focus. The main focus is Miguel and Hector and um, both of their um, storylines. That's basically the focus of the film, and it's done really well. The movie looks fantastic. I mean, Pixar, have they ever failed at anything? What I really like is that uh, a couple years ago, they were really getting into the intense shadows and the intense lighting and everything because they were like, oh, look at what we can do with our technology, but it was almost like too intense and it was almost too much to the point where it was distracting, but here they've really stepped it back a bit and now they're just letting the colors take over. They're letting the film really shine and it looks amazing. The film just is bright, it's colorful. They use orange a lot, which is just, I, I, I've said this before, but they just, movies don't use the color orange enough at all and they use it a ton, so that was great actually. Um, yeah, and then the film is just animated so well. A lot of the character, there's a couple characters who, um, they're like spirit animals. They're just neon colors, and the way they pop up against the uh, land of the dead, it's just, it's such an interesting way that they did it. It's just, it's very flashy, but it's not cartoony. It's just very, it's very fluid. Like, it's very, I don't know, it was just pleasing to watch. It was a pleasing film to watch. The music, I, the songs to me weren't that memorable. I'm sure it's gonna get an Oscar nomination, but, yeah, it wasn't a song. It was a, it was a good song, especially towards the end when they play it again. I was like, okay, this is a good song. I, there's a couple other songs within the film, but a lot of them I don't. It's not a it's not a musical really, so it's not like a move. It's it's not like the music was that important. The one song that needs to work, it works really well. It's just not a. It, it, they weren't songs that I'm gonna be humming later or anything, but. They were good. The movie just didn't get my it didn't get my attention. It wasn't the movie that I was super excited to see. The main reason I saw it was because it's Pixar. But after seeing it, I'm like, this is another almost 10 out of 10 Pixar film. It's right up there with stuff like Toy Story, Monsters Inc., Finding Nemo, Incredibles, uh, Toy Story 3. Inside Out, it's right up there with all of them. It's one of the greats. Pixar, Pixar's kind of a mishmash nowadays. It's sort of like, they had Inside Out, but then they had The Good Dinosaur, but then they had Finding Dory, but then they had Cars 3. Now they're Coco, and then The Incredibles 2 is coming out, finally. That'll be the next Pixar film. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's been a mixed bag, I guess, but it's kind of hard to criticize the company because it's like, hey, you had, so many perfect films in a row, now that you have one bad film, now we can call, whoa, now we can really criticize you. Even when their films aren't that great, they're still great. I mean, Cars 3, I never did a review on it, but I thought it was an okay film, but it's just, Coco is like, this is their, this is Pixar at their best. It's when they can do stories like this that are so simple and f stories that you've heard before and you've seen it done before, but the way they tell it and the way it's done and the characters and the way they pace it and the way it just looks, Pixar is just amazing at that. So yeah, it was a great film. You're probably wondering what I thought of the Frozen short beforehand and I'll just say really quick, I thought the opening song was pretty good and I thought the short film was probably too long, but it didn't feel like 20 minutes. But I just didn't see the point of showing it before Coco. I didn't see the point in having another Frozen short. And if you were gonna do that, why not just throw it on TV? In fact, I'm sure they are gonna have it on TV. If the short was like 21 minutes long, and most TV specials are like 22 minutes long, yeah, it'll probably be on TV in a couple of years. Probably on the 25 days of Christmas or something. But I just didn't see the point. I'm like, but it, it, it didn't feel long. The short wasn't really 
bad. It was just, I was, I was kind of like just sitting there. I was just sort of sitting there, and I don't. After, after it was done, I kind of just forgot what I watched. It was fluff with a really good song and a couple good jokes here and there, but nothing special. Um, well, here's to the next Pixar film. Let's hope it's as great as this one. Um, Coco, I'm sure, is going to win the Oscar for Best Animated Film. It's, it's probably the best animated film this year, so see you later.